What's up, Grizz Nation? Welcome to another Grizz Game Day update. The Grizzlies will take on the Raptors today in Toronto, 6.30 p.m. If you're watching here from Memphis, joining me all the way from Toronto is my good friend, Savannah Hamilton. Savannah, thanks for coming on for the first time. Of course, good friend. We also played for the same university team, wore the same number. Same we wow. should put our jerseys right now. We should. I know, right? Okay, next That's time. why I have 11 next to my username. Anyways. Uh an homage to me. I'm going to take that. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sav, look, the Raptors are taking on the Grizzlies for the first time this season. Um, for the, I think, third straight game for us, we have a clear injury report other than Danny Green, who you guys are obviously very familiar with. He won a championship for Toronto. Um, he's still out with his, um, you know, coming back from his knee injury last year. But the Grizzlies have a couple guys on their injury report that are questionable right now. One of them is Fred Van Vliet, which is really a shame because he's really like the motor that gets this team going. Um, what's the deal with him right now? Yeah. So he actually left last game, um, a little bit early in the fourth quarter. He, he left previously, but he came back, tried to fight through lower back stiffness. He was getting stretched out in the locker room, came back, wasn't great. And then sat the rest of the game. Um, and then of course there is also, um, precious Achua. Who Memphis uh, knows very well. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Um, and he, uh, went out with a like ankle sprain, like, like almost over a month ago, I think, I believe now. So he's now listed as questionable. He did speak to media yesterday at practice. So that's actually a really great sign. Um, so mm -hmm. fingers crossed that he's available for the game. Okay. So both those guys game time decision. So could be full strength, could not be, we'll find out a lot sooner, um, to the game. Let's talk about these actual two teams, because like I said, it's the first time that they are playing each other this year. So everyone's kind of brand new coming into this one. The Grizzlies are coming off of a loss to the Suns. The Raptors are coming off a loss to the Clippers. Raptors currently sit 11th in the East Grizzlies third in the West. The, the Raptors offense, Savannah, that's what I want to talk to you about first, because it has been bottom of the league this year, bottom five in field goal percentage, three point percentage, but where they do score a lot of their points, it looks like is they are top three in the league in fast break points. It's another thing that the Grizzlies do really well too. What are we going to see from the Raptors offense today? I believe playing with pace. That's something that coach nurse yesterday at practice really emphasized. I also talked to Scotty Barnes. He also saw, also emphasized that we got to play into the transition game a lot more when playing the Grizzlies, which I mean, I know you guys are still a really fast team, but you know, with the Raptors, that is their greatest strength because right. Like for the majority of the season, actually, you know, as you mentioned, the three ball was not dropping for the Raptors. They kind of found a solution now with Malachi Flynn shooting around 46% from the three. So he's been able to space out the floor, but he's only recently been playing as of the past, like four or five games. Um, and so he's still finding his rhythm out there. So that's definitely something that the Raptors have to focus on offensively. Um, absolutely. Kelsey. That's interesting because the Grizzlies, are I think 18th in the league right now in three points made. They're like 20th in percentage. Um, they got Desmond Bain back recently, but he's still kind of trying to find his groove. The Raptors were in the bottom, but I guess if they have someone coming up, like it's, it's not indicative of where they actually sit right now. So um, the Grizzlies, look, they haven't found their three. They have not made 10 like double digit threes in I think two or three games now. And there was something like when they make 10 threes, they have won like 90% of their games. It's crazy. So they haven't been able to hit that. Let's talk about the Raptors defense. Who's going to be guarding, you know, like who, who's the person that will be guarding Des? So that would be like your two guard. Yeah. I think that's going to be a, a mixture. Cause like the Raptors are so like the word is versatile of this. Like that's their season word. I swear. Um, <laughs> so I think it's gonna be, you're going to see probably Scotty Barnes on him. I wouldn't be surprised because Scotty could play one through four usually. Mm -hmm. um, so that'd be my first guess of who would match up with him. Obviously, OG is great, but I think they might be saving OG for another matchup that I'll let you get to as well. <laughs> Let's talk about one of the most electric matchups then, because it's John Moran has had 30 or 30 or more points in the last two games that the Grizzlies have lost. And in both those games, only one other person has scored in double digits. So it's going to be really tonight is like jaw will get his jaw plus who, like who can be the supporting cast? Yeah of the Grizzlies today, but let's talk about Jaw quickly because it is the first time he's, it's the first and only time he'll be in Toronto. The first time he's playing against the Raptors. Let's talk about John Moran versus OG Ananobi. What do you like about this? Well, I love this because you're talking about one of the best offensive players in the league right now versus one of the best defensive players in the league. Like OG's name is right up there for defensive player of the year right now. Um, and I, you know, just watching OG 
defend various like guard matchups to this past season. He's defending Luca really, really well when they played against Dallas. And you're right, there is a certain, you know, when you're playing against a high offense guy, like the way that Ja is, and he's very versatile, he's so fast, he's a really quick first step. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you got to take keep in mind that they're still going to get theirs, but it's about more so how much can they contain them, how much they can li- limit them or like at least deny passing lanes. And maybe that's on the, the team collectively rather than just a one single matchup, but definitely with OG, like he knows how, that he can get his steals. He can get up to five steals a game sometimes. So if jaw's not taking care of the ball or like extra careful, you know, that's, that is just prime for OG for sure. Yeah. OG is, a super pesky defender. Like he is like up in your pocket, like super pesky and he's long um, and, and strong. And I don't want to say jaw has struggled, but over his career, it has been more difficult to score against longer guys. Like I think Ben Simmons was on him and in his first year and he struggled, but this is also three years ago. So besides the point, um, my other two points are that Dylan Brooks, Brandon Clark back in Canada, where they are from, I'm hoping to have a big Dylan Brooks game. Let's talk about the Dylan Brooks matchup, because that would leave Dylan versus who's your four. Is it Pascal? Pascal's more of a five. See, this is where if or fatality. <laughs> yeah, this is exactly it is. This is where I could see a Pascal on Dylan for sure. And, but ideally, and I doubt he'll start potentially but if he does and he's he's back for sure it would be um precious so I could completely that would be a fun matchup because both those guys are tough Mm -hmm. exactly exactly and like you know precious he can move and I, I you know even watching him at practice yesterday like he was going through an extra hour after practice of a lot of like hard movement type drills like getting to the rim through contact and everything and like and then defensive slides and like you know defending a certain uh, matchups with the assistant coaches that were challenging him so I think just by watching of it I can just tell like he might be defending a guard tomorrow and I wouldn't be surprised if that guard would be a Dylan Brooks type okay my last question for you Savannah before I let you go because we both got to get ready probably get a quick workout in do our thing drink some water um mm-hmm. the Grizzlies are first in the league at rebounding the Raptors are 20th however when you look at the offensive rebounding, they're both top five in the league. They're both top four in second chance points. So explain to me what's going on on this rebounding. It seems like it's real good on the offensive end, not so good on the defensive end. And look, I'm not going to sugarcoat this, but Steven Adams and Jaron Jackson Jr. are a mismatch for a lot of teams. They're both, you know, six, 10 to seven, one guys mm-hmm. who can rebound really well. So talk to me about who's boxing them out and then what the heck is happening on the offensive glass for you guys. So obviously when doing the research and like covering stories for this team, you know, the biggest point of anxiety for me and I'm, we're not playing KJ, <laughs> we're not even playing. But the biggest point of anxiety was like, yeah, what are the Raptors going to do about, you know, Jaron Adams and, or sorry, St- uh, Steven Adams and Jaron. Yeah. And I was like, well, that's a good she question. Said- <laughs> that's a good question because right now, as you mentioned, like the, on the defensive end, they're not grabbing boards. And sometimes, you know, you see guys maybe, take a possession off on that on the rebounding end on the defensive end but you see on the offensive end the reason why they're so high is because guys especially like Chris Boucher that's how they get their points another like, Canadian woo, woo. Another, yeah, exactly another Canadian shout out to Canadians so like Chris Boucher is like uh you know he's uh, he's like top five in the league right now for players coming off the bench and mm-hmm. he's had 20 point games multiple times a season um you know double doubles but the majority of his points are coming off the offensive glass. And so it's not just him. So if he's not just getting the rebound, it's going to be a guy like Scotty. It's going to be a guy like OG. Like they just know how to get the offensive board and get their own and score off of that way. So that's points in the paint is another thing to also probably watch out for with the Raptors because when they are clicking points in the paints, numbers are like out the roof. Um, But otherwise, yeah, I woke up with a lot of anxiety, especially around Steven Adams because he's just so strong. And mm-hmm. there's no center on the team. Maybe Kem Birch, but Kem is like in and out type of thing that can match that level. No, 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 another play. Canadian? Is he another can- Canadian. Oh, You're right. You Canadian count. <laughs> <laughs> but for sure. Yeah, that's a point of anxiety for, I think, this team right now is the is the post. All right. So that's a big thing to look out for heading into the game. Like I mentioned, it is tip off is at 6 30 PM. If you're watching from Memphis at 7 30, if you're tuned in from Toronto, you can watch it on Valley sports Southeast and the Valley sports plus app Savannah. Thank you. And have so much fun tonight. Good luck. I can't wait to watch. Hey, thank you.